Now here's an example of um, what's called an IR transmission spectrum for carbon dioxide. This is, um, this is a, a spectrum which comes from a, um, a piece of equipment called an infrared spectrometer. And in this type of equipment, what you do is you have an infrared source, which is like a, a, a glowing filament, a hot filament, almost like, you know, um, in, a, in a regular incandescent light bulb, you have a glowing filament. So you have a, a glowing filament, so I'll make it look like a glowing filament, inside um, this machine. And it's going to give off infrared radiation because it's hot. Okay, and you're going to... Um, kind of focus the infrared radiation towards a sample, whatever you're interested in, in exposing to the infrared radiation, in this case carbon dioxide is going to be in this sample, and then you're going to allow the infrared radiation to pass this sample, and um, at all different wavelengths, you're, you are um, allowing you know, one wavelength at a time to pass through um, this particular sample, okay? And only certain uh, wavelengths are going to come out on the other side. And the wavelengths that are absorbed by the carbon dioxide are not going to come out on the other side. You're going to detect this with some kind of a detector on the other end. Okay? And so this, this is called an IR spectrum. This would be what you see on your detector on the other end. And what, what it is is you have percent transmittance on this side and you have wave number down here. Now wave number is um, kind of strange. It, it, it is another way of representing the wavelength. Only um, normally for the wavelength for infrared radiation, you're going to be in the micrometer range, and um, but the traditionally infrared spectroscopists, the people who do this kind of work, chose to convert the micrometer wavelength unit into um, wave number units, which are inverse centimeters, and so the conversion one wave number equals 1 over a micrometer times 10,000. And the reason why they did this was because um, the wave number um, matches or correlates directly with energy uh, since we've, um, it's the inverse of the, um, of the wavelength. And remember, there's an inverse relationship between wavelength and energy. So in other words, if the higher wave number is higher energy, lower wave number is lower energy. So it's just a way that they have traditionally um, expressed um, wavelengths in terms of wave numbers so that the bigger wave number um, corresponds to higher energy transitions. All right, so don't let that confuse you. Um, it's still a measure of the wavelength or the, just a way to separate the different types of um, infrared radiation. Um, to make a long story short, the, the, this what happens is you're exposing the sample carbon dioxide to um, infrared radiation of varying wave number or wavelength and the transmittance is how much is getting through and 95 percent of you know most of the infrared light is getting through getting through maybe a little bit is being absorbed by you know some other gases that are in the sample or the container or whatever and then all of a sudden you have this decrease to zero transmittance that means at this particular wave number no um, IR is getting through, that means it's being absorbed by your sample, okay? And so we have two major um, areas where there's an absorption of infrared radiation. Um, this one is at about 2400 or so nanometer, or wave numbers, which is the same as 4.26 microns. And this one here is at about 15 microns, which is about, looks like about 700 wave numbers. Okay, it's about 15 microns, okay? Uh, sh um, Shorter wavelength, higher energy, longer wavelength, lower energy, higher wave number, higher energy. So this is a higher energy transition and this is a lower. And this is the one that corresponds to the stretching and this is the one that corresponds to the bending. And that makes sense because we said that the stretching takes more energy than the bending. Think of a, a slinky, it takes more energy to stretch it than to bend, it just kind of flops back and forth. Okay, so, um, so indeed this is evidence that carbon dioxide absorbs infrared radiation. It absorbs it because of the vibrational, what they call vibrational modes um, of the carbon dioxide, the ability of carbon dioxide to stretch asymmetrically and to bend. And so it's in the range of the infrared, spec, spec, um, infrared region, and so that's where it's absorbed. All right?